Our scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew this morning, verses uh, 24, or chapter 24, verse 44. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. We've titled this message Be Ready. This was some last moment uh, preparation because Pastor had uh, some challenges. Um, so we did a little text volleyball and um, made this nomination. So uh, what we will do before we start into the word here, we want to pray. And uh, again, it just takes a moment to get into the message here. Let us pray together. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your precious word. You came the first time, Lord, to make a sacrifice for us to be set free, to wash all our sins away, give us a doorway, Father. And we just thank you for the preciousness of the plan of salvation. And I'm asking that you be with me for this moment. Be with us, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit. And may the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. O oh Lord, wash us today, cleanse us today, bathe our minds in these few moments with your word, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, this is my go-to book, Matthew 24, because so much happened in the ministry of Jesus while he walked the earth. He told us in Matthew 24, 44, he said, so you also must be ready. See, we should take this text to heart because the very name of the meaning, Adventist, means we're expecting something marvelous to happen. And we need to be ready for it because the Son of Man, who is Jesus Christ, will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Now, this is very important to us because we know that we stand in the doorway between birth and death. In the middle is life. On a gravestone, it's just a little dash, but that dash means so much. It means so much because in it, something happened that is so phenomenal that we'll spend ceaseless ages in eternity telling the story of how we overcame. Now, in the Gospels, they're classified in four books, but three are listed up here, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, an eyewitness of the life and ministry of Jesus. He primarily addresses the Jewish population. Mark and Luke, on the other hand, associated with the apostles Peter and Paul. And they write primarily to the Gentiles. Jesus presented as a servant and Jesus presented as a teacher. This outline gives us a further clarification even of John. So Matthew portrays Jesus as a king, Mark as a servant, Luke as a teacher, and John as the son of God. The key phrases that we'll find in each of these books is the kingdom of heaven, as a brother pointed out when we read Mark this morning, immediately. There's a lot of healing that went on, a lot of miracles went on in, in the book of Mark. Parables took up a great portion of Dr. Luke's writings. And then in John, we have a lot of teachings. And then we see with each of these writers that they focus on different aspects of Jesus. The genealogy from Abraham, 
Mark takes no note of the origins of the history. On the other hand, Luke takes great pain to trace the genealogy all the way back to Adam. And again, John, he emphasized none. The time sequence was during the Passover. John captures three Passover events. This is a picture of the synagogue at the time, the great temple. Now this should take our eyes just a moment to grapple with the size of this building. This was a huge building. Now, the, the reason this is important or significant because Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came to him to call his attention to the building. He said, um, uh, here, here's the conversation. Do you see these things, he asked? Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Now, in 70 AD, because the Jewish population was living under the Roman Empire, there was a challenge, pretty much like we have today. People tend to want to challenge authority, the government. Right? And it was no different back then. And as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, they said, when these things and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. Now, keep in mind, they all knew the story of Noah. They knew that there was a great flood. I was listening to a message this morning and was saying that many in the academic environment that don't think about Creation, they think about what? Evolution. Yes. So to talk about creation, to talk about the magnificent, wonderful power of God is almost speaking a language that is not understood. In other words, I do not speak Romanian. So it's like telling some people in certain environments about God. It's like speaking a language that you do not understand. You might understand the, the greeting like salute. But past that, you get lost in the sauce. Jesus answered and said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Deception was the very issue at the tree in, up in the garden. It was deception. And it has not stopped. So God is telling all of us, watch out that no one deceives you. Now, Back in the Jewish time, this is how scripture looked. It was on a roll. Yes. We have the preciousness of this Bible where we can turn pages. This is a whole history that went into Bible writing. But we're going to keep pressing on here because we do have a number of events happening after church. It says, in verse 5, it says, For many will come in my name, in Jesus' name, claiming that they're the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars. Do we know about that? Rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Now, I will say a lot of us have hypertension and a whole bunch of other issues just by watching the news between 6 and 7 o'clock. We get sick about it. But he says to us, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation. We know about geography in a way that we never knew before. I never really understood where Ukraine was, but I know where it is now. Okay, so there's things that are happening that teaches us about this is real. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophecies of Daniel coming to pass. There will be famines. Have y'all ever heard of that? Earthquakes. There are thousands of earthquakes that happen that don't even register. We see about a hundred of them that are shattering. Yes. I mean, off the Richter scale, six and seven magnitude in various places. There's earthquakes going on right now. Yes. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Any women here had a baby? Yes. You know what it's like to go through birth pains. And the beginning of that thing is something else. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm a man. 
I've never given birth, never will give birth, but I've been with my wife and giving birth, the very beginning of that, I think for a lot of women, is frightening. But you have joy when the morning comes. Amen. You're glad when that baby, you're holding that baby, and it's a healthy baby. Praise God for healthy children. Now, in verse 10, it says, at the time, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. You wonder why there are so many wars. Many of the wars at the very root of it is religion. In Judges chapter 6, it says, and there was war in the gates. Why? Because any time things are challenged, I can tell you a couple things that are cause a fight among men. Money, a woman that more than one man likes or loves, and religion. Now, you put those in any sequence, but if you trace all of the wars in the world, those three will be at the top of the list. And then we're warned, it says, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. False prophets saying, I got something for you, I can change something for you and can't do anything because they're not connected with the power of God. Because of the increase of wickedness. Now, I must say again, have y'all seen wickedness lately? This causes the love of most to grow cold. Because people do not love the commandments of God. God is love. When people turn away from God, People turn cold. We even have a saying in the neighborhood saying that was cold blooded. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel, this gospel that's found in the word of God, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, from Genesis to Revelation, this gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. The reason this is so important because the gospel is being preached throughout the world. We have Adventist World Radio, which I talked about a little while ago, uh, Papua New Guinea, thousands of people baptized. In Rwanda, Africa, after the genocide, hundreds of thousands of people gave their life to Christ. People are getting baptized every day or yes. joining the church every day around the world. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, that's a big phrase, but when you see people leave this gospel and go towards another message, that is an abomination. Calling themselves or itself God are standing in God's place that is an abomination. And God said, when you see this, you know the end is nearing. And it's, he tells us, he says, pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. Now think about it. When he prophesied this, this was back in, in uh, A.D., 27 to 80, 34, right in that window. The Sabbath is still present, but the world has an end, but he's talking about the Sabbath. So that means the Sabbath is still a matter of fact for God's people. It's a sign between us and our God. The very word Sabbath, part of that, B-A-T-H, is like in, in, uh, in translation of Hebrew, it's an oath. It's like we're taking an oath for what he has set aside for us, we're saying, God, I believe what you said. I'm going to take this rest on this seventh day because you commanded it. Yes. Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Yes. What has happened in this world is Sunday keeping came about because man says what? Our religious organization has more authority than the word of God. That's the big controversy. It's either this or what man says. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to choose this. I'm going to choose the word of God. Then it says, for then there will be great distress 
Anybody experiencing distress? Yes. Unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. In other words, if you're going under stress, distress, having anything going on between your head and your toe, it's because we're living in a time that causes great distress. The pharmaceutical companies are making plenty of money because of distress. Hospital systems, prison systems are making a buku amount of money, got a large population, a line around the corner because there's great distress. Our court system is full of crime and criminals because of great distress. If those days had not been cut short, this is how you know Jesus is coming back because this can't go on forever. We got pollution. We're drinking micro pieces of plastic. It's either in our food or in our water. How long can a body consume something that is not healthy and live forever? No one would survive. We're here by the grace of God today. His mercies, the washing and cleansing of Jesus' blood, the mercy seat is why we are here today. But for the sake of the elect, that's you, prayerfully me, those days will be shortened. Now, here's how we know where Jesus is today. After now, you got to remember the disciples were standing when he was going up into heaven. It says that after he had said these things, after he had spoken to them, he was lifted up. He's, this is his disciples witnessing him going up into heaven while they were looking on. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky... While he was going, behold, two men, these are angels, in white clothing, stood beside them. They also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way. In other words, it's not going to be a private conference somewhere, not in a movie theater somewhere, not at a restaurant somewhere. You're going to see Jesus as the lightning shines from the east to the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Everybody going to see Jesus. As you have watched him go into heaven, he's coming in like manner. Now, Focusing back on Matthew 24, 29, says, But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Now, this is prophetic. This happened back in the 1700s. That's why you had the first and the second awakening where the whole world was preparing for Jesus to come. And because there was a great disappointment, the Advent movement came about. Most of the people that were waiting on Jesus were Sunday keepers. There was not anybody keeping the Sabbath except for the Jews. But there were a people that studied the word of God and God gave a group of people the impression not just keep two commandments or four commandments, not five, not nine, but all 10. Yes. And one of those 10 that had been overlooked was the fourth Sabbath. Yes. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Now, everyone here knows that people do a whole lot of other stuff on Friday night, Saturday, right? Yes. Sabbath time. But they're doing other things other than keeping the Sabbath. And that's why your discipline and my discipline, discipleship towards Jesus Christ is so important. Because somebody's watching. Somebody's getting a message. And one day they're going to sit down and ask you why you believe what you believe. Therefore, be on the alert. For you do not know which day your Lord is 
coming. See, we're not going to do this all the time, y'all. We're not going to sit here all the time. This, this thing is temporary. Yes. It's very temporary. It's like going to the airport and you're sitting there waiting on the plane, right? Yes. Eventually, they're going to call for that gate to open, yes. right? And you're going to walk up there with either your cell phone or your ticket, yes. and you're going to get on board. And the door is going to shut, Mercy. and that plane is going to take off. Yeah. This plane is going to take off. Yes. And the prayer is you got your ticket through Jesus Christ. Yes. You're going to get on board, stay on board. So when he shows up, you and I can make it home. It says, behold, he is coming with clouds. It's not going to be a secret thing. And every eye shall see him. Even those that pierced him, that crucified him on the cross, there's going to be a special, special resurrection just for them yes. to see what he said come to pass. Yes. And all the tribes of the earth, whether you speak Spanish, Romania, uh, Swahili, uh, and I can go on and on. You understand what I'm saying? No matter what language you speak, what part of the world you're in, if you're in the Antarctic, the Arctic, whether you're at the East, the West, the Philippines, China, it doesn't matter whether you're in Nigeria or South Africa. Yes. It doesn't matter where you are. You're going to see Jesus yes. if you get up in that first resurrection. You, it says the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. What's that tell you? It's going to be some people crying, I heard the gospel. And I didn't prepare. I didn't pay attention. But he says, so it is to be. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming and we're preparing to go. We got to go, y'all, because this thing cannot last forever. Being sick is not a beautiful thing. Being in pain is painful. You got to get relief. And the thing that I know is that Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they do not like to see anyone suffer. It's a direct result of sin. These are comparative texts. Matthew 24 and 1 Thessalonians 4. Now there's something that stuck out to me. It says in verse 31 in Matthew 24, it says, And he will send forth his angels with great, with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, north, south, east, and west, from one end of the sky to the other. Yes. And I thought about this text for a long time. And then I remember one of the first things I heard was what? Revelation 14, the what? Three angels message. So as you're hearing the message, as you're hearing the three angels cry out, you're hearing them cry out every time you hear a minister in the pulpit. Yes. Every time uh, you see some great events happening in the news, yes. you know the trumpet is sounding. Yes. And I'm going to briefly read part of these three angels' messages. It says, in 14.6 it says, And then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel. To proclaim to those who dwell on the what? Earth. To every nation and tribe and language and people. That's all of us. Nobody's left out. Everybody's going to hear the gospel. They might tell you, I don't know. I didn't hear. But God knows. Amen. They heard something. Yes. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory. This is our whole purpose. Give God glory. Because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. Yes. We're hearing this. We're seeing this right before our very eyes. Yes. And we walk around. Well, he said, be ready. Yes. Be alert. We're compared to in this time as the ten uh, virgins. Yes. Five were wise. Five were foolish. The five wise had oil in their lamps. The five foolish didn't have enough. Yes. And when the door shut, they looked through the little people and said, I do not know you. 
We want to be known by God. We want our voices heard by God because we have a God who sees, he hears, he hears, and he speaks to our heart through his precious word. We do not want to miss out on Jesus' second coming. Why? Another angel, a second follow saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon. Babylon is confusion. Babylon is that people that walked away from God. They may have heard the word, but they decided to do their own thing. He says, she who made all nations drink of the wine of the passion of her immorality. And then this is the one that should catch us because this is the angel sounding. And it says, and another angel, a third, followed them saying, with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or in his hand, showing loyalty in any way to anything that is different from the loyalty and being a disciple of Jesus, right? It says, he also will drink of the wine of God's wrath. So we're told that we have to make a choice. This is a thing of choice, and in that choosing, be ready. Maybe we don't know how to explain the 2,300 days, but just like we were raised by our moms and or our dads, we know when they say yes and when they say no. Why? Because there's a consequence to following what they said. One morning, my dad came in to check on me when I was a little boy. He said, Bert, get up. And um, I told him no. I never said no to him again. <laughs> yes, sir. I learned from right then and there, do not underestimate the power of daddy. So this thing is serious now because God is trying to get us to pay attention because he has blessings for us. And here's the thing that gets most of us. We know we're weak, we're broken down, we toe up, we mad. Sometimes we get jealous. Sometimes we just plain old mean. And we need the grace of God. I know I do. Sometimes I say some things to people, and I have to remember, I just sent that person a Bible text. And I got to follow through with that. So sometimes I had to get real humble. It's called being a servant of God. I said, God, what is that? Sometimes I got to listen, shut my mouth, and just say, Lord, help me. So in Ephesians, the apostle Paul, who, by the way, persecuted a lot of people, a lot of people died as a result of his jealousies, if you will. But Jesus showed himself straight from heaven, shined light on him so bright he went blind. And after he gained his sight back, he preached the gospel. He traveled from one end of the Mediterranean to the other. And then he wrote in Ephesians 2, he said, for by grace are you saved through faith. Lord, I don't understand what I'm reading, but I got faith to believe that you're real. Amen. And that none of yourselves, I can't do anything to save myself, children. If I tried to go to heaven right now, I might be able to leap up maybe this high on a good day, but today I don't feel like it. But that's about as close to heaven as I can get on my own effort. I'm dependent totally on Jesus. And have you noticed the very, very, very rich, after they get everything, every car, every building, salaries in the billions of dollars, the next thing they want to do is go out of space. Huh? Go out of space. If you go out of space, the next thing they're going to have to send they're going to have to send a doctor, a nurse, a psychiatrist, a psychologist. Then they're going to have to send a preacher. They're going to have to send a funeral director. They're going to have to send, you, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> We're here, y'all, and we got to get ready to go by the power of God to heaven. Grace is power. It's when I say, God, I can't do no more. I'll either be at the club, I'll be at the liquor store, I'll be at the drug house, I'll be somewhere broke down trying to find a fix. But grace is power. 
to yes. say no yes. to sin and yes to Jesus. Yes. Grace is the power of God that makes man adequate. In other words, Adam and Eve, they lost their adequacy in their own power to do right. God says, I know you want to do wrong. I know you do wicked and evil because that's what the devil is. He's a liar and a murderer from the beginning. And you, as a sinner, inherited that nature because we subjected ourselves to genealogy to that nature. But God said, I'm sending you grace is power of God that makes man adequate to do what? Fulfill the divine purpose for which man was created. We were not created to be in pain. In fact, we were not to see any inner parts of bleeding. We were not to know what the liver and the lungs look like. We were not to know what it is to have different kind of ectomies, and you can put in front of that just about everything you want. We were not to know what osis, whatever you put in front of osis. Those are medical terms that came out of the Greek dictionary. We were not to know those kind of pains and itises. We were not to know that. But because of sin, here we are. We have a healing God, and God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We have the marvelous plan of salvation before us. And he says, what? Well, be ye also ready. This is our time, because this lifetime, a brother asked one day, why is it so important now? Because this is it. Yes. No matter what age you are, from birth to my grandfather lived 102. That's your lifetime. That's it. Yes. We know people who die before they get double digit. We know people who die in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. At my age, I can name as many people above ground that I can remember their names as I know people in the ground with a tombstone over there yes. of various tragedies, accidents, or whatever. Yes. It's real. Yes. It's not a, a, a happen situation that you come to know Oh, how about God's word? This thing is real. Yeah. We're living it. And we have to encourage one another. Hang on. Hang in there. Live this word. Hold on by faith. God showed us love at Calvary. He took action to save us totally outside of our own effort. Yes. God provides 100% of salvation for us because he loves us. We are the remnant, survivors of the great tribulation, living in a new way with a new spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. He can heal. He can help. He can give you peace and comfort. We're invited to walk in a new earth. It's going to happen. Just like the time of the flood, that was a great event. There's going to be an event when that cloud breaks open in purple, green, Blue, yellow, every color you can imagine. There are going to be angels gathered up like clouds to the left and to the right. All of heaven's going to be poured out. And you and I are invited. We desire to keep the commandments of God. How? By the grace of God. I can't keep commandments of my own. But by his grace, I'm going to try. No matter what the rumor, the story, the truth, the lie, whatever my character may appear to be formed in other people's mouths. I'm dependent on the grace of God to keep his commandments because of myself, I can't do it alone. I need God. We need to pray to have the faith of Jesus. We need to pray to receive grace to help us. We need to pray to receive God's Holy Spirit, to be born again, to be washed anew, and like the Apostle Paul, after all he went through, he said, but now of these things that move me, he said, neither count I my life dear. He loved the gospel of Jesus Christ. He loved Jesus Christ more than food. Yes. He said, I want to see Jesus. Amen. Dear to me, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus 
to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The grace of God gave him power to no longer turn on his brothers and sisters, but to turn his brothers and sisters to Jesus. Point to Jesus, because he is our only answer. And the question comes to us loud and clear, my brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of Christ, are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus to come? There's a song. I don't know how to sing it. But are you ready? Are you really, really ready for Jesus to come? No man knows the day or the hour. The angels don't know. Only God the Father knows when he's going to say that's enough. They can't take no more. They can't endure that pain anymore. They can't do any more wars. They cannot drop nuclear bombs on each other and people survive. They can't take any more plastics into their body. They can't drink any more polluted water. My sisters, this, I'm wrapping up now. My sisters were in Houston this past week. Many of us, we don't know what it's like to go tornado, hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. But when I go home, a lot of times people, whole houses just set out at the curb. Uh, cabinets, sheetrock, everything, just waiting for the garbage man to pick it up. Got to order some more. And so my sister, she says, Bert, she said, we're out of power. After a few days, everything that was in the refrigerator and the freezers was in garbage bags, six large bags of food. And that went on all throughout Houston. Two million people without power losing everything in terms of perishable items. For five days, heat 80, 90, 100 degrees. When you go to a traffic light, you can't drive through because you got to stop. Wait for that guy. Stop. Horns honking and just chaos and confusion. Can't even walk the dog. Merchants could not process payments. Can't go to the grocery store because they can't check you out. If you don't have cash because their terminal's not working. Five days, I've got aunties and uncles in the 80s headed towards 90, walking on canes. You don't have to tell a person that's been in an earthquake or with their power off that there's something wrong. They got a natural call from nature saying, Jesus is coming because we could not live like this any longer. And I'm pleading as God would have one brother plead with a brother and sister, let us get our hearts ready to meet Jesus. No matter what your age, color, whatever you're going through, whatever your orientation, get with Jesus. Let him straighten that situation out because he's able to do what no human can do. He can fix a situation you could be backed up to the equivalent of the Red Sea yes. and God will send a wind yes. <laughs> and you'll make it through. Amen. Whatever his children need, he's going to see you through it. Yes. If something in school is too hard, pray, study, and pray. Yes. He will help you get that passing grade that you need. Yes. God is able to do what no man can do. And you ought to have that testimony building up in your soul right now because where you planning to go, you're going to be testifying through our ceaseless ages. Oh, Lord, thank you. Jesus has saved me. Amen. You're going to be able to tell a story that angels can't tell. Amen. You'll be able to tell the story. I've been with Jesus. <laughs> he is my Savior. Yes. That's why I'm standing here. Not because of what I'm able to do, but he is able to carry me through. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming. Amen. And all our troubles here will be over with. Amen. What a comforting thought that is. Amen. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Let's sing this closing hymn, 632. Until then.
us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the blessing of your Holy Sabbath day and the gathering together to hear your word, to hear your music, to share with one another. Now as we step apart, we fellowship some more, we go to our families, we ask that you will bless us, bless our families, bless our co-workers. Hear our prayers, Father God. We need you desperately in these desperate times. And we're asking that you will be with our pastor and his family. Bring them healing. Bring them back here to your people. Father God, somebody came here with a burden. Let them leave with that burden lifted. Let them go in peace. Let them know that there's a God in heaven that hears and answers prayers and that cares. Father God, we thank you for your marvelous love and grace. And you told us if we confess our sins that you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we claim your grace today. We know that our enemy is trying to block the way to the mercy seat. But Father, we're going to keep pressing on until we grab hold of that mercy seat and realize the mercy, grace, and love that you have for us. We thank you. We bless your holy name. And for all those who have suffered through darkness and storms and problems, we ask for extra deliverance for them right now, wherever they are on the face of the earth. And thank you, Father God, for your marvelous love that you showed us through the power of the cross of Jesus. We shall always say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And let it even be said out of our mouths today, Jesus is our Lord. And we thank you for one another. And may we part from this place with the joy of the salvation that you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray and bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.